Welcome to Alberta News and Views. Great news today. Common sense conservatives will move a motion to declare a non-confidence in the Trudeau government. The world is done with Justin Trudeau. The Liberal NDP party is imploding. It is an absolute disaster right now. The longer Justin Trudeau stays on as prime minister, the worse it's going to get. Day after day after day, and you see it in question, period. They know they're guilty. They know they are done. It is written all over their faces. Let's listen to Pierre Polyev make this great announcement. Canadians are good and decent people. They do not have to live like this. They should not have to give up on the things that we all used to take for granted, like affordable food and homes, all for the ego and incompetence of one man. Life was not like this before Justin Trudeau. It will not be like this after he is gone. We're going to replace the hurt he has caused with the hope that Canadians need. So now, Today I am announcing that I'm giving Trudeau one last chance to spike his hike. One last chance and only one more day. Today I'm announcing that if Trudeau does not declare today an end to his forthcoming tax increases on food, gas and heat, that we will introduce a motion of non-confidence in the Prime Minister. It will read that the House declare non-confidence in the Prime Minister and his costly government for increasing the carbon tax by 23% on April 1st as part of his plan to quadruple the tax while Canadians cannot afford to eat, heat, and house themselves and call for the House to be dissolved so Canadians can vote in a carbon tax election. <laughs> tax election. You know, I wonder if Pierre Polyev got the nod from investors or the go-ahead from other ministers in Quebec and liberal ministers. Like, they made their own coalition and they made their own agreement moving forward. He has lots of money, like lots of money from donors. I'm sure Justin Trudeau is going to get pushed out from the inside. Pretty much every expert I have talked to and watched, they all say that he should resign or he's going to, he should be resigning. He's either going to resign, get pushed out, or he's going to raise this tax and he's going to absolutely destroy the party. Either way, nobody will listen to Justin Trudeau after April 1st. And in that carbon tax election, there will be a very simple choice. On the one hand, you will have the carbon tax coalition of the NDP and Justin Trudeau, who take your money, punish your work, tax your food, double your housing costs, and unleash crime and chaos in your community, or common sense conservatives who will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. We have a common sense plan that will bring home lower prices by axing the carbon tax and by capping spending and cutting waste to bring down the deficit, inflation, and interest rates. We will eliminate the waste in government, like the $60 million Arrive Can app, like the billion dollar green fund that only funds liberal insiders, like the $21 billion or $1,400 per family Trudeau is spending on consultants, outside consultants, high-priced consultants that cost you more. We will eliminate this waste and we will bring home fiscal sanity to fix the budget. We will also build the homes. After eight years of Trudeau housing, costs have doubled because we have the fewest homes per capita in the G7. Common sense conservatives will require cities permit 15% more home building as a condition of getting federal funds. Those that beat the target will get a bonus. Those that miss the target will pay a fine. That will mean that municipal bureaucracies get paid like realtors and builders. They get paid for the number of homes they build and sell. We want municipalities to get paid for the number of homes they permit. 
we're going to sell off 6,000 buildings and thousands of acres of federal land to build, build, build. We'll take the carbon tax off, which will reduce the cost of materials and transportation of those materials to build those homes. We will stop the crime. We will bring jail and not bail for repeat violent offenders. We will bring treatment and not more legalized and subsidized hard drugs to bring our loved ones home drug free. We will secure the border and lock up gun criminals and smugglers instead of targeting licensed, law-abiding, trained and tested sports shooters and hunters. We will do all of this to bring home and to bring hope to the Canadian people. The Canadian people who have suffered so, so badly over the last eight years, who remember the country that they loved and the country in which they still believe. A country where hard work will once again pay off. Where a trucker who d delivers us the goods for 50 years will be able to live a good and dignified retirement. A country where young couples will be able to plan a new home in which they can have beautiful babies and, and raise a wonderful future for themselves and their families. A, a future where our kids can walk safely on the streets, where families do not need to peer out their window to see if their car has been stolen, or worse yet, leave their keys at the front door so that the thieves can simply take them as they please. A country that is proud of itself, proud of its history, proud of its heritage, and optimistic about its future. A country where the state is servant and not master with small government, and big citizens, a country that puts the common people first, the common sense of the common people united for our common home, your home, my home, our home. Let's bring it home. Thank you. Thank you very Great message. And I, I remain optimistic and I hope I truly do that he can accomplish all of his goals and everything that he wants to do. But there are huge, huge question marks over top of Pierre Polyev such as the Climate Accord, a lot of the agendas that Trudeau signed on for, uh, <laughs> the reform with our health care, uh, all of that stuff, um, transitioning from public to private. He has to do something different. Even if Pierre Polyev gets elected, the debt remains. And that we are spending more on debt payments than we are on healthcare now. And healthcare costs are going to go up. So he's going to have to change a lot. I think the main thing that Canadians want right off the bat is normalcy and justice. We want justice for all of these scandals. Me personally, I hope he gets elected, but I don't want the Arrive Can scam, the We Charity, the SNC Lavalin. The Winnipeg lab, doc, lab, lab documents, I don't want those things to disappear. I want Larry Brock to stay on it, and I want him to get them all. We need justice. We need to see that the system works. And we need to know that when you work in Canada, it's worth it at the end of the day. Seven out of ten Canadians right now do not want to work. They don't want to work. They're just waiting for the opportunity to just drop everything and move on. Productivity in Canada is an absolute free fall. Um, Pierre Polyev ta uh, talked about that at the beginning of this press conference. And it's bad. We have the, the lowest personal GDP growth um, in the G7. Personal growth. It hasn't been this bad since the Great Depression. And we know it. Um, and we feel it. We, we see it out there. It's unbelievable, the crime and the drugs and the morale of this country. It's, uh, it's pretty sad. Follow me on Substack and Spotify. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Like, share, and take care.